Good morning everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Lego Legend of Zelda custom set showcase wave 3.5 and we're getting closer and closer to wave 4 now but I thought out of nowhere I would drop a surprise custom set for us today and this one in particular is Z this number Z0053 with 1370 pieces making this one of the biggest custom sets we've ever done. This is Take Back the Sea, based off Breath of the Wilds, Luralin Village, and some of the quests around that area. And we'll get all into the details of the references and all the things we can do in this large playset as we go through today. But let's start off, as always, with our description and our box art. So as I mentioned, this is set number Z00053, Take Back the Sea, where ages 8 and up, inspired by Breath of the Wild, with 1,370 pieces, retailing for 129.99 Great British Pounds and containing eight minifigures and two brick built characters and of course as I've mentioned multiple times now this set is inspired by the Luralin village area of Breath of the Wild an area that some people actually never discover in their playthroughs and um, we'll hear about some of the stuff we can do in this village right now so enjoy your summer stay in Luralin village in the new Lego Legend of Zelda building set inspired by Breath of the Wild build and explore two iconic shaped buildings and the monster fort of Aris Beach Help villagers round sheep, make seafood paella, and play the mystery game. Furthermore, search the village for the solution to the Korok puzzle before sailing on the brick-built raft or canoe to take back the sea and save the village. With explodable action feature and three floors of play, the Monster Fort provides additional hours of play. And that is very true. Once again, the quest Take Back the Sea from Breath of the Wild is a side quest given to you in Luralin Village where you have to sail out to the Aris Beach Monster Fort and reclaim it by killing all of the monsters with inside and that is largely what's represented here that is definitely what i would call the main draw to the set but without further ado let's open up our lovely green box art with our desert background to find eight numbered bags and three instruction manuals inside inside our first instruction manual we will see that bag one gives us our link minifigure as well as our blue lazalfos while we build a raft and also a lookout platform for the monster fort Bag 2 builds our ground floor of the fort and gives us both a black Bokoblin and a silver Bokoblin. Bag 3 builds our blue Moblin and finishes off the monster fort. And if we open then instruction manual 2, we will see that bag 4 gives us one of our villager minifigures as well as starts the house. And bag 5 finishes that house while giving us our child villager. And then in manual 3, we see bag 6 and 7 both contribute towards the building of the larger house. This is the uh, mystery game, as Lego would call it, or the gambling game as we better know it in Breath of the Wild, giving us our last two village minifigures. And bag 8 finishes off by finishing the house, giving us our sheep and our Korok for the set. But let us jump straight in, and I think we're going to start with our village houses. So... Uh, who shall we start with first? I think we go for the big one, the exciting one, the gambling game house. So, Luralin Village in Breath of the Wild has a very unique architectural style, making everything look like uh, boats and very tropical. We've got lots of palm trees in the surrounding area, as well as these big th uh, thatched roofs made out of straw that are nice and rounded on the top of the building. And that is one detail that I have tried to replicate here, using the big... Uh, uh, dish pieces that are used on sets such as Jabba's Palace in the colour of dark tan. At the very very top you can see a plant stem coming out the top as if a palm tree is starting to grow inside this house and um, on the upstairs area you can see our Korok puzzle. However we're not going to start there, uh, we're going to take a look at the entrance which has been shaped off to look like the front of a boat hull. It's been a bit oversimplified and that's mainly because of the playstyle nature of this set. You've got a couple of leaves growing out the front as well as you can see the palm tree round to the side which has minifigure heads in the colour of lime underneath which are supposed to represent uh, palm fruits. We've got a couple of flags hanging off the sign, maybe these would advertise the business or maybe they're purely decorative. A lantern's outside the front and a couple of wooden steps lead up from the beach to go inside the house and if we look around the side in what is basically the sheep pen which is attached to the side of this house you will see a crate and next to this crate we inside well we have um, some ingot pieces and these here are representing goat's butter from Breath of the Wild and they're not a perfect representation but given pieces available in the Lego system I think they're pretty good you've also got some rock work and some stilts which build up underneath the house and sort of add to this nice landscape feel a lot of the houses in Luralin do have farmer pens near to them especially this house which is inspired by um, the corresponding house in Luralin that actually has this Korok puzzle on, one of the hardest Korok puzzles in the game and that is why it made it into this set. 
Up on the wall you can see some of the windows which are maybe shuttered up. You've also got some banners drooping down above the windows as if maybe we're celebrating something or just maybe they're decorative to ward off spirits or something. Either way, a nice splotch of colour on what is basically a brown building. However, this wall also can open and you will see it will swing open on hinges like so and that gives us access to the inside, which with a bit of artificial light I can help us see inside. You actually have a uh, picture on the back left wall as well as a crate which would contain a spear or another little decoration. Furthermore, there is also a little flower pot on the very right hand side, although that's particularly hard to see. But the main feature here is the mystery game or the Breath of the Wild uh, gambling game, which is run by uh, Cloyne, who um, basically leaves you a choice between three chests to choose from. However, here we've changed that out to mystery walls. So you can see three grey panels in front of you and these would all have question marks on them and you get to pick a mystery one. So let's say I pick the one on the right. Oh, and I seem to have been unlucky, and it looks like I've got some self, some poo, or maybe it's a snail shell. Either way, seems like I got unlucky there. Okay, then, what about the left? Oh, it looks like we've picked up a sword this time. And as for the middle, there is, of course, a diamond sitting in a barrel waiting for you as your prize. So this game actually has a couple of features. Round the back of the building, you can see where uh, the items hide when they're not on show. And this means that you can change them up and switch them around so that whoever's playing the game, whether it be Villagers, Link or your friend, um, you can change up who's going to get which item behind which door so it's not always predictable. More specifically, it means you can have fun if you're playing with a friend or a parent where you can make them guess and you can change it up last minute and then see if they guess right. So it's a bit like playing a cup game but in Lego form and I think it's a really cute play feature that has a lot of potential for enjoyment from kids which is always what we strive for with these large play sets. Taking a closer look up there, you can see uh, while it doesn't look great from this side because obviously it's a more functional side and not supposed to be viewed, however there are a couple of nice details like the red awning above that I do particularly like and think ties this whole build together. Okay then, moving on to the top floor of this house, and there is still stuff to discuss with this building. You've got a little plant blocking one of the windows, which are actually using the gold lattices just to make them blend in a little better. But on the roof here is the infamous Breath of the Wild Korok puzzle that is so, so difficult uh, to try and launch the rock up here. And from this angle, you can very clearly see that one of the stones is missing, and we need that, of course, to make our Korok up here. But where is it? Has anyone spotted it throughout this build? I certainly hadn't as it was down here in the front of the sheep pen, just resting on the side and this is using one of those uh, little rock pieces introduced in translucent opal uh, with the friends line however recolored here in light bluish grey to make the Korok rocks and of course here you can see one of our sheep as well. But anyway just picking that up and putting it to completely triangular pattern on the roof will of course make our Korok appear and this is actually a reused Korok from the Breath of the Wild Master Sword Pedestal Z0007, nope, 9. Yep, Z0009 from Wave 1, and that is definitely a custom set I recommend you check out as well if you haven't already. One more thing to take a look at though in this back section, I couldn't just leave some wasted space. So if you lift off the easily removable roof, inside you will find both a bow and a treasure chest. And this treasure chest could of course store whatever you wanted, whether it's goats, butter, rupees, uh, the diamond from down below. Maybe this cloins a uh, secret stash from all of his winnings from his game. Or maybe even the bow is the chest and the chest is just decorative. Either way, nice secret storage compartment, could probably fit a minifigure or two as well. Maybe this is where we store the sheep as well if you're carrying around a loose display. So um, I think it's particularly useful inclusion and I really like its presence here. Okay then moving on to the other house included and I can't believe we're not even halfway through this custom set yet. So this house is one of the round houses where the Luralun villagers live and one of the most iconic things that I really wanted to capture in this model was the palm trees coming out of the top of the house. We've also got the canoe here and this canoe is uh, designed to go out to the monster fort along with the raft. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. But you've also got this little dock segment here adding to the playability with the raft but also allowing us to store some extra bits. If we zoom in on that area, you'll see we also have uh, the house is definitely raised up. You've got the wooden steps going up to the front door as well, and everything is raised up on the one by one round cylinders in dark brown, giving it this stilted house impression. And on the sands, you of course have a cooking pot as well as this container on the docks, which contains some fish. And don't worry, all of these foods are adding up to something. And if you can guess, leave it down below. However, I will tell you at the end of the video. And on the other side, we have some crates with some tabantha wheat as well, just sort of hanging there. I mean, these would get washed away if the ocean came in, but that's not my problem. 
At the back of the roundhouse, you can see a couple more of the design elements and see uh, behind the palm trees at the top just a little bit more clearly. Once again, we're using the dark tan thatched pieces, but also around the back, you've got a little hidden sack, just an extra piece of playability for one of the figures to mess around with. And once again, we are using the gold lattice windows and have a bit of texturing using the dark brown elements on both sides of the house. At the top you can see the palm trees, and this actually represents another Korok puzzle, although there is not two Koroks included in the set. Not only do we have a seagull here just sort of hanging out underneath, maybe that's an arrow reference, but we do have some palm fruits, but also an apple out of place on this palm tree, and this references a Luralin village Korok puzzle where you have to uh, shoot down the apple from the tree just so there's palm fruits left, because of course it's out of place. But once again, this roof does indeed lift off and it separates with the palm trees in order for you to access the interior. So let's take a look at that now. And the interior here is indeed an octagon. This interior is the exact same style as uh, the treehouse set from 2019 where there was an octagonal room and the room is built pretty much the same. However, all of the details found on the inside are unique. I suppose the biggest difference here is the fact that in the middle of the floor there is a hole for the palm trees to come through and I really love this detail. It really gives it a nice feel to me. But I'm going to remove them out of the way for now so we can get a clearer look on the interior. And on the side next to the door, which is in dark blue, we have a little chest of drawers with a teacup on the wall. And then we also have a carrot hanging there as if maybe this is food to cook for dinner. We also have a gold frying pan and a little recipe card inside of the uh, work surface inside some panel pieces. And then on the other side of the room, we have a candle on one wall as well as some bunk beds, which are probably too small for any minifigure. But it's the thought that counts. And I really love the baby blue color that we've used for those. Okay then, as we make our way out to sea onto the monster fort, we have two more builds to take a look at. We have the two vehicles to get out to the monster fort. Now, why are there two vehicles? Well, one, it spreads out the set and makes it a bit more interesting, but two, we have Link minifigure included, but we also have a villager guard that's been included called Numar, and I like to think that in a child's headcanon, Numar could come along on the adventures and you could have a bit of a two-player tag team adventure, so I thought having a second vehicle so Link doesn't always not have a friend would be a lovely inclusion, but we're taking Take a look at him as a figure later. Inside the canoe, this is the dark orange canoe that appeared for the first time in the Friends Apartment set last summer. However, uh, we also have two oars included for whoever is going to ride this thing, well, allows them to ride this thing. And I suppose this could also be used for domestic use, maybe it's catching fish or something for our food project. But more interestingly, I think for all of us is indeed the raft. The raft is built uh, a sideways construction using uh, snot techniques on Technic axles with pins at either end, which go to one by six plates, which then go out to one by one bricks on the end to create this knobbly like tied together log look. We've also got a Technic axle in the middle, which leads up to the sail, which is built out of a combination of different curved parts to create a almost billowing effect. And I really like how it turned out. Around the bank, it is just attached with some more Technic pins to this brown axle, and there is plenty of space for Link to stand. But what is our destination when we get there? We not only have our main monster fort, but we have our lookout tower. And taking a closer look up at that, you've got plenty of space to pose plenty of figures. I recommend buying the Bokoblin and Lizalfos battle pack with this set in order to get more enemies to fill up your monster camp. But not only can you see plenty of space at the top, but there's this nice olive green leaf technique representing the large frondy leaf canopies that exist at the top of these watchtowers in the ocean. And around the bottom, you have got a Technic Hacksaw running through the middle, down to this blue plate representing water, and we have a snail shell or just a decorative shell at the bottom as well this could again link to another minifigure that we'll see later and our support platform is indeed supported by some cross braces purely decorative but make it a little less weird looking underneath and then onto our main monster fort which is a three story mega build and as i mentioned earlier you want to stick around to the end because there is an explosion feature like in age of calamity but we will get to that very soon so, rotating it around a bit, you can see we have a stairway going up to the first floor, then another staircase going up to the next floor, and then the chest over on the floating platform. These things are known for not being particularly stable looking or looking entirely physically possible in real life. And I tell you what, I wasn't even planning on including this in a custom set until very recently, when with this new transparent piece appearing in this uh, Summer 2022's Mario set, in particular Big Spike's Cloud Top Challenge, I really thought this is the piece that's going to make the monster fort work, and um, well, that was the catalyst, and now here we are with this amazing custom set that I've been working on for a while, and I'm really, really pleased with how it turned out. I was genuinely never expecting to have the opportunity to do this kind of fort, and, um, well, here we are.
So starting down at the bottom where we should start, we have a load of different sea life either to be collected for different recipes or just to be enjoyed as a little splash of colour. Over by this little rock formation out in the ocean where the transparent pillar sits, you've got some starfish, a crab, and then a bigger starfish. And if we come around the other side, you will see some more shells. And I don't know if you noticed it earlier, it was a bit of a hard spot, but once again, the hearty blue shell snail appears in this set, just like the Hinox Peach Rampage. And that, of course, is a little Easter egg to the Breath of the Wild food item, but also has a role in a play feature later on. Then we have this staircase uh, that comes out of the water up to the main fort. It starts off normally using our staircase piece using medium nougat tiles to create a more boarded wooden effect. But as you get up to the top, we start using the curved spiral staircase pieces, which are here to represent um, a curved piece of stairway, as you'd expect. And we also have a skull and crossbones decoration as sprinkled around. Um, lots of these camps contain the skulls of their enemies hanging on all the balconies. And this is the unprinted Ninjago skulking head that is here. And um, it's looking rather nice. If we come around the front, the staircase is over in the top left back. And it comes out underneath the platform. You've got some more bones hanging around as more as well as those Ninjago skulls. The one over on the far left actually contains a flame coming out the top. And you've also got some bones hanging there as well. You've got a nice open space to fight with the moblin as well as some other things and then you've got this cattle skull before you head up to the next floor. We've also got a couple of these olive leaves again hanging over just sort of contrasting with the dark tan and adding to the this was once a tree kind of vibe or that it's being constructed from trees and we're also making great use of these curved slope pieces on the edge to look like the big fabric pieces that hang down over the sides. If you don't know what I'm talking about maybe it's time to look up one of the Breath of the Wild forts or maybe I'll put an image on screen. This angle also gives us a clearer look at the hearty blue blue shell snail but also I just really like the elements here and I wasn't expecting it to come out so well. Lots of curved shapes and lots of angles and of course it is built nice and fragile for that explosion feature. Going up to the next floor though, we have a couple more details. Once again, a large open space to come into conflict with some enemies. You've got some bones hanging off the side as well as some more cloth elements around the other bits and sides. A pile of woods that are all at an angle just for more decoration. And you've got some barrels spread around as well. Taking a look at the barrels and the weapons rack, you can see we have the bronzed out double axe here, as well as a traveler's spear and a traveler's sword. So some basic level weapons for our Bo Koblin encampment. And inside those barrels is, of course, the return of our rupee piece. For those of you that have watched other episodes of the Custom Set Showcase, you know what I'm talking about. But for anyone new here, in this bag we contain our rupees. Just like the Marvel accessory packs, which contain a pack of a, a blast accessory pieces in a little uh, holy bag, in our Zelda sets we often include this rupee collection point, which has a pack of 8 rupees which can be used for different purposes throughout the set. Either here this works as monster loot, or it could work as uh, prizes with Cloyne's game or in his chest, or just things to buy food with. But of course, at the top of the monster fort, there is of course a chest as well. And this is the same design I've been using since wave one for our monster locked chest, e.g. you have to complete all the monsters to open it. And it's just made with a dark bluish gray chest with uh, some decorative elements to look like a monster face. And opening this one up is um, some rock salt. What a weird inclusion. I chose to put the rock salt here because I thought we needed to lock the other play feature behind the monster encampment. However, once again, play is up to you. This could be rupees, this could be the diamond from the mini game, this could be the butter if you wanted it to be. Anything can be interchanged and I just chose to put the rock salt here for our images. Okay, and now it's time to finally reveal what I'm talking about with all of these ingredients. So throughout our set, we have seen tabantha wheat, goat butter, rock salt, hearty blue shell snails, and fish. And when you combine these together in Breath of the Wild, you of course make seafood paella. And this is a big part of one of the Luralun village side quests, What's for Dinner, where we have to make seafood paella for this mum and her child um, as she's run out of time to cook for the day. And of course, this piece is actually included as a printed tile element with this minifigure. So I thought it only fitting to include all of the ingredients just like I did with the fish pie back in the Yiga clan attacks which is Z0049 another fantastic custom set Moving back to our monster camp though, at the very top we have the iconic skull element which makes up the camp. This is about the best I could do, it's not perfect, but Legos are very blocky medium and especially given that this thing has to explode in a minute. We've got the horns on the side, the big holes for the eyes making perfect use of the new upright slope pieces which featured heavily in the Titanic and the Fender Stratocaster guitar. You've also got some snot techniques on the underside to build up a sort of jawline with some rounded elements to look a bit like molars, and the top of the head is nice and rounded off using a curved slope element. 
but it's time. The last thing to take a look at today before we take a look at the figures is of course the explosion feature. Down at the base you may have noticed the 2x6 brown tile that is sticking out and of course this looks very very fragile because when you thwomp your hand down on that, everything is going to explode. And I mean everything. So we've got a couple of different segments here. Not only does the skull come off the top, but the top layer will be able to slide down, the middle layer will be able to slide down, and the big pillar underneath will detach. The transparent element holding up the little chest will also detach, as well as the chest element will go flying, representing when you blow up one of these camps in Age of Calamity, or with um, the big cannons on Death Mountain. And I realise that this camp is never blown up, but I thought it was a much more exciting play feature to have and include. And also, if you're going to do one of these camps, you sort of want it to just be able to collapse, right? So I'm channeling White Cat Bay Lego set energy along with, of course, um, a Mario set using the transparent cone element and then also just Age of Calamity as well. What a great idea. I really, really love how this one collapses. And here that is from another angle, perhaps a little bit easier to see what's going on. You've definitely got a couple of different elements. The skull is going up and hopefully it would create a nice big sliding explosion with all of these big elements and all your Bokoglans, who of course everyone knows can't swim, just falling into the ocean. What a great idea. And that actually does it for our set today. We've still got the minifigures to take a look at first, but earlier I mentioned that this was one of the biggest sets we've ever done. So let's take a quick look at that ranking first, and then we will get straight on to the figures. So as many of you will know, the biggest custom set you have I've ever done is uh, the Hylian Shield with 5,532 pieces. This was a wall display piece, shortly followed by the Hyrule Castle Sanctum in its remastered form at 1,500 pieces. Coming in third was the Tower of the Gods with 1,552, and then finishing us up in fourth place, Take Back the Sea with 1,370. Taking four places isn't bad, I was not intending this set to be so big, I was thinking 700 pieces, but um, I sort of got carried away and um, I had a great time with it. So I'm um, really interested to see it take a, a top spot here, and I definitely think it's worthy of being one of the biggest, um, so that's really, really cool. But, let's start those figures. So first up today, we have... Link, um, which is in a unique combination of Breath of the Wild armor, I've dubbed this set the Summer Vibe set, which is a combination between shirtless, climbing shorts, and the Desert Vo headband, all of which you can see references popping up on your screen. We've got the green climber shorts, the bare chest, and then the Desert Vo headband, which is actually reusing the same hairpiece they gave Pixel, the robot ninja from the Ninja Dojo Temple in 2021. But we've also got a new and exclusive vinyl piece. If you're not familiar with the vinyl elements, think about the Monkey King's skirt element, as as well as the Ninjago Secrets of Forbidden Spinjitzu scrolls were all made out of this vinyl element. Sometimes they use it for dragon wings. And either way, we have a small vinyl element representing the Korok leaf, which has been slid onto a British brown antenna and secured in place with a stud with a hole in it. And um, that is just so we can create the Korok leaf element. So it would have a bit of a wobble to it. It would be a bit fabricy, and I just really like the way it turned out. And I think it's definitely the way to do the Korok leaf. So I was really pleased to finally be able to include it with a raft here, and I think it looks great. I also love Link's angry expression, which is nothing new. And of course, the shirtless print did appear in the Hinox Beach Rampage. However, I wanted to change it up here, so he's almost got his green shorts. So let me know what you think of Summer Vibes Link. I do expect that if we ever see LEGO Legend of Zelda sets, they will mix armor sets because it's cool and you can do it in game. So um, I think it's pretty accurate, really. Next up, though, we have one of our villagers. This is Numa. Uh, he is the villager, which I mentioned as sort of almost a companion piece for Link. They could go on adventures together. He is um, sort of a guard of the village in the game. I've given him as simple as Traveler's Spear in light bluish grey here. He's got some plain arms, some jewel molded legs with a little bit of printing on the side, as well as his grey top, which I think is the closest colour to the one in game. He's got his belt on and his little necklace as well, and he's got some very defined cheekbones and a nice little smile. He's using the simple Luke, old Luke hair that they did in uh, some of the New Hope sets in black, which I think is the closest one. I was tempted to use the serious hair, but it was just a little bit too long. But I settled for this one and I'm pretty pleased with him. I definitely think he's a worthy companion to join Link on some adventures. Next up, of course, we have Cloyne, the owner of the uh, gambling game, or should I say, as Lego would call it, the mystery game. And he has got his unscrupulous orange bottle, which sit next to him in his little house, and he's using mid legs because he's short. He's got his big beard and his moustache, as well as a disgruntled expression, or maybe he's looking a bit mischievous. And he is using a lavender torso with lots and lots of detail and a little bit of printing on his arms. Definitely the mid legs were the right choice here, although I'm not sure they'd given the bottle in a real set. Next up we have Kiana who is the mum. She is using a plate in a one of the medium blues, probably baby blue, just like the beds in her house. She's also got the 2x2 printed 
tile element of seafood paella. Always love getting these Breath of the Wild foods into these sets. This is our second one after the fish pie. And she would have um, her outfit from in-game. However, it's a bit hard to see. Um, and obviously the plate is blocking most of it. So I didn't have to do details like the flowers. She's also using the simple bun piece up at the top and has a nice simple smiling face. Next up, we have her son, Kinov. At least assume it's her son. They live together, right? I, I don't know. Either way, we have Kinov here who is using small legs. He is holding a white shell, which is like he's about to put on his necklace or he's found it to make into his little necklace thing. He's using a tan torso with some decoration and some jewel molded short legs using coral at the top and reddish brown at the bottom. He's got a little shocked expression, like he's so excited to have found something. Maybe he's just seen his seafood paella dinner or he's found another shell to put around his neck. And I just like the little expression and he's using the very old fashioned comb over piece as well. Next up, we have the Breath of the Wild Blue Lizalfos, another exclusive lizard variant. We've almost done all the lizards now. We've had um, green, silver, and dark, as well as all of the elemental variants. We're just missing black now and the blue one, which is obviously making its first appearance here. And I think he looks pretty good. Maybe he should have been a bit more purple, but I wanted to distinguish him a little bit more from the ice Lizalfos, so we went for this darker blue color scheme. Once again, using the molded hair piece that I've made for him in since wave one, and I definitely recommend checking out the Lizalfos battle pack. It's definitely a perfect companion piece to the this set that we've just looked at today. Then we've got the blue moblin, which is another exclusive recolor. And I know I promised a while back that I would be trying some minifigure moblins just to see if they looked any better. But I definitely still think they are a bit bulkier and I wanted to include something with a bit of size in this custom. So we will still be doing that in a future video. However, for right now, I still want to stick with this guy. He uses a over the top molded chest piece, just like Groot did in the 2014 Gardens of the Galaxy set, as well as an over the head minifigure attachment, which makes up his head, which has a hole in the top for the existing horn piece. He's carrying a night halberd and has some recolors of some pieces in blue it's about 50 pieces maybe slightly less and he's also got his loincloth in dark tan Next up, we have the Black Bow Koblin from Breath of the Wild, and this is an existing figure that we have seen before in the Bow Koblin Battle Pack, and he's possibly made an appearance in one of the set. I'm struggling to remember the top of my head. Once again, he's got an over a minifigure head attachment so that we can make uh, Stal Koblins next at some point soon, and he's also got his original club mold as well as some detailing on his chest. I won't bore you with this figure anymore. And here is his reference imagery. He should have some white markings, but we didn't include them on this guy because it would just make it a little bit too busy. And then we have the Silver Bow Koblin, which does indeed contain his markings. Once again, this guy has appeared before in the uh, Hyrule Wall Defense from Wave 2, Z0029, uh, to 8 even, to 7. Oh, there are too many numbers at this point. 28, 28. And he has got the club piece once again in dark brown, as well as the skull on his torso and the correct colors, as well as his red eyes. Moving into another figure we've seen before is the Korok, which I've already mentioned is a reuse from Z009, the Master Sword Pedestal from Wave 1. He's using the winky face one on the thing, uh, on the harp piece in green, uh, rotating on a Technic pin, and he's got lots of different angles and his little legs are made out of recolored wheat stems into tan. Then to finish us up for the day, we have the brand new animal, the sheep, which appeared last summer in 2021. And while the sheep in the Breath of the Wild are rams, you really don't expect them to make a new mold. They would just reuse the sheep piece. You get two of them in this set, and it's a really adorable piece that I'd be loving, loving to see in the LEGO Zelda lineup. And one of them would probably include the new overcoat mold that appeared in this year's summer sets in 2022. And that's actually going to do us for Z0053 Take Back the Sea. There is a lot to cover here, and it's been a whirlwind of a making. Now, this set's been under construction since Lurinum was suggested to me last year. Unfortunately, I don't quite remember who, but I'm almost betting it was Jackson Lambert. <laughs> um, so here it is after such a long time. Lurilin was one I always knew I wanted to do. I like the villages from Breath of the Wild and Kakariko definitely is next on my agenda as far as these villages go, although I will definitely be taking a break from Breath of the Wild villages. Um, I always knew I wanted to do the houses, but Lurilin isn't exactly the most exciting of all source materials. If I just did houses alone, the only unique thing in the village is the gambling game and the architecture, which unfortunately was not enough to make a set based on. But when I saw that Mario set, all the ideas started to fall into place, and I think pairing this with the Monster Camper Aris beach to make the take back the sea quest was just a lovely piece of synergy that really worked nice and well for me uh, especially given the quest is given in Luralin, but Luralin is also an oceanside village you almost needed that combat in a box but 
and I just think it came out well. I really love the play features. I love the explosion and stuff, and that's always what we strive for with some unique things. We've got a great figure selection. You know I'm always a sucker for including more Breath of the Wild food, like the paella, and actually I'm really happy with the minifigures. Summer Vibes Link was not something I was particularly excited to draw initially, but the more I did it, the more I just enjoyed him, and I'm just having fun with the customs, so it's great to be still doing these. We're still going a little bit slower at the moment, but pace is starting to pick up. Hopefully by the end of June, we will be ready to start launching Wave 4 properly. But in the meantime, let me know what you thought of this custom. Stay patient, keep enjoying, and um, always go back and check out the other customs if you haven't. They're, they're well worth it, particularly Wave 2 and 3, I think. Um, and even Wave 1 has some stuff to offer. And um, in the meantime, I will see you next time. So uh, have a great day, and uh, I will see you on Monday. Bye-bye.